The Starliner saga is nearing its conclusion as SpaceX has launched a Dragon spacecraft to retrieve the astronauts who have been stranded in orbit aboard Boeing's infamous spacecraft for months. To be fair, this is great news for everyone, especially SpaceX, but a devastating blow for Boeing. This moment all but seals Boeing's fate in the spacecraft manufacturing industry, marking what could be the definitive end of the Starliner program. Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. On the evening of the 14th, a Falcon 9 rocket successfully launched four astronauts into orbit, marking the official start of the Crew-10 mission to the International Space Station. While every crewed launch is a significant milestone, this mission carries even greater importance, as its success paves the way for NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams to finally return home after spending nine months in space. Friday's launch followed an initial attempt on Wednesday night, which was called off due to a hydraulic issue with the ground support system handling the Falcon 9 at Launch Complex 39A in Florida. However, no technical issues arose on the actual launch day. Under clear skies, NASA astronauts Anne McLean and Nicole Ayers, JAXA astronaut Takuya Onishi, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Kirill Peskov reached orbit without incident. Upon arrival at the space station, the Crew-10 astronauts will take part in a handover ceremony with the departing Crew-9 team, which includes Wilmore and Williams. If all goes as planned, Crew-9 could leave the station as early as Wednesday, March 19th, weather permitting, for a splashdown off the Florida coast. Although NASA has yet to officially confirm there is growing urgency to bring the crew back to Houston as soon as possible. The prolonged Starliner mission, along with its entangled political and bureaucratic complications, has remained a source of controversy. For Boeing, this is yet another major setback, not just for Starliner's reputation, but for its future viability. The program's financial troubles continue to mount, delivering the aerospace giant an unwelcome gift it certainly didn't ask for. In 2024, Boeing incurred substantial financial setbacks on its CST-100 Starliner program, absorbing over half a billion dollars in charges that pushed the program's cumulative losses past the $2 billion mark. The details emerged in the company's 10K annual filing with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, submitted on February 3rd, 2025. Boeing reported a total of $523 million in charges for the year, attributing the losses to a combination of schedule delays, elevated testing and certification expenses, and increased costs tied to post-certification missions. This figure represents the largest annual loss Boeing has recorded for the Starliner, surpassing the $489 million hit it took in 2019. Breaking down the 2024 charges, Boeing disclosed $125 million in the second quarter, and $250 million in the third quarter. On January 23, 2025, the company foreshadowed an additional loss for the fourth quarter, though it withheld specifics when releasing its financial results five days later. The annual total implies a fourth quarter charge of approximately $148 million. With these latest figures, Boeing's aggregate financial burden on the Starliner program now stands just above $2 billion, a staggering sum that underscores the project's persistent challenges the filing included a sobering caveat. Risk remains that we may record additional losses in future periods, signaling that the financial strain may not yet be over. Notably, Boeing's leadership remained tight-lipped about the Starliner during a January 28, 2025, earnings call with investors, offering no updates on the program's status or future plans. This silence extended to NASA as well, with neither the company nor the space agency providing public clarity on when, or if, the Starliner might return to flight. Questions linger about whether the next mission will be a crewed test, an uncrewed demonstration, or an operational flight, leaving the spacecraft's path forward shrouded in uncertainty. At a January 30, 2025, meeting of NASA's Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel, members shed some light on the ongoing investigation into these issues. The panel, briefed by NASA, acknowledged significant progress on certain fronts, but highlighted that the critical thruster problems remain unresolved. Paul Hill, a panel member, expressed measured optimism, stating, the details shared by NASA gave us confidence that they are focusing on the right core issues and the related path to safely flying Starliner. However, he stopped short of offering a timeline, leaving the program's next steps ambiguous. After all, the $523 million in charges for 2024 reflects not just the fallout from the CFT mission, but also the broader difficulties Boeing has faced in bringing the Starliner to operational status. 
Schedule slips have plagued the program, as have the rising costs of additional testing needed to meet NASA's stringent certification requirements. Even after certification, Boeing anticipates higher-than-expected expenses for operational missions, further eroding the program's financial viability under its fixed-price contract with NASA, originally valued at $4.2 billion. Unlike traditional cost-plus contracts that allow for reimbursement of overruns, this structure has forced Boeing to bear the full brunt of the losses, a reality that has exposed weaknesses in the company's initial cost projections and execution strategy. Moreover, both Boeing and NASA have lacked transparency regarding Starliner's future. This has fueled speculation about the spacecraft's viability, especially when compared to SpaceX's Crew Dragon, which has consistently executed crewed missions to the ISS with reliability and cost efficiency. As Boeing grapples with mounting challenges, the Starliner program now stands at a crossroads. So up to this point, what have NASA and Boeing officials said about Starliner's future? As of March 15, 2025, the spacecraft's return to flight remains in limbo, with no clear timeline established for its next mission. Both NASA and Boeing are working diligently to resolve the issues exposed during the CFT, while also navigating a crowded launch manifest that complicates scheduling. Steve Stick, NASA's commercial crew program manager, addressed the situation during a March 7th briefing. We've got to figure out, manifest-wise, where the Starliner fits, he explained. Does it fit best toward the end of this calendar year for its first flight back after CFT, or does it slip into early next year? Adding to the complexity, NASA has a busy slate of missions ahead, including a SpaceX flight tasked with boosting the ISS's altitude to ensure its continued operational viability. NASA has outlined plans to finalize the Starliner's vehicle certification by the end of 2025, a critical step toward declaring the spacecraft crew capable. However, no firm decision has been made about whether the next flight will carry astronauts. The agency and Boeing remain cautious following the CFT mission's troubles, which cast a spotlight on the spacecraft's reliability and forced a reassessment of its design and systems. Last year's CFT mission, intended as a pivotal demonstration of the Starliner's capabilities, quickly devolved into a prolonged ordeal. The Calypso capsule, carrying astronauts Barry Butch Wilmore and Sunita Williams, encountered significant issues during its automated approach to the ISS-5 of the spacecraft's reaction control system, RCS thrusters, small engines used for precise maneuvering, were unexpectedly disabled by the flight computer. Engineers later traced the problem to overheating, a malfunction that jeopardized the spacecraft's ability to dock safely. The thruster failures were compounded by another issue, a series of small helium leaks in the propulsion system that pressurizes both the RCS jets and the larger Orbital Maneuvering and Attitude Control, OMAC, thrusters. Boeing's investigation revealed that the leak stemmed from the slight degradation of seals exposed to corrosive propellant over time. What was meant to be a routine 7-14 to 14 day mission ballooned into a three-month saga as teams on the ground scrambled to diagnose the problems and determine a safe course of action. Ultimately, NASA made the difficult decision to return the Calypso capsule to Earth without its crew prioritizing astronaut safety over mission objectives. Wilmore and Williams remained aboard the ISS, extending their stay far beyond the original plan. They are currently scheduled to return as part of the Crew-10 mission aboard SpaceX's Crew Dragon, a stark reminder of Starliner's failures in contrast to the reliability of its competitor. Despite the challenges, progress is being made. In a recent media briefing ahead of the crew's return, Stick reported that approximately 70% of the anomalies identified during the CFT mission have been addressed. We are making good progress on closing out the in-flight anomalies and the observations from that flight, he said, expressing cautious optimism about the path forward. Among the efforts underway, Boeing is testing candidate replacements for the problematic helium seals, a critical fix to prevent future leaks. Looking ahead, NASA and Boeing are also focusing on the dog houses, the protective manifolds that house the RCS and OMAC thrusters. These components have come under scrutiny as potential contributors to the overheating issues. To gather more data, NASA plans to conduct rigorous testing later this year at its White Sands facility in New Mexico. One doghouse, configured as it was during the CFT mission, will undergo hot fire testing in a vacuum chamber to simulate space conditions. The results will be compared to a modified design featuring updates such as enhanced thermal blankets and adjustments to redirect the OMAC thruster plume away from sensitive areas. 
Once we get through that, those campaigns will give us a clearer picture of what we need to do for the next flight and when we can realistically fly again, Stish elaborated. The testing is a pivotal step in restoring confidence in the Starliner and determining whether additional redesigns are necessary before it can safely carry a crew. The stakes are high for Boeing, which has faced intense scrutiny over the Starliner program's delays and technical hurdles. Originally conceived as part of NASA's commercial crew program, alongside SpaceX's Crew Dragon, the Starliner was intended to provide a second American-made option for transporting astronauts to the ISS, reducing reliance on Russian Soyuz spacecraft. While SpaceX has successfully flown multiple crewed missions since 2020, Boeing's program has struggled to achieve the same momentum, with the CFT mission marking its most significant setback to date. For NASA, the Starliner's woes present a logistical challenge as well. The agency is keen to maintain redundancy in its crew transportation options, ensuring that the ISS remains accessible even if one provider encounters issues. A fully operational Starliner would bolster this goal, but until Boeing can demonstrate the spacecraft's reliability, NASA must lean heavily on SpaceX to meet its needs. As the teams work toward a resolution, the timeline for Starliner's return to flight remains fluid. Whether it takes to the skies again in late 2025 or early 2026 hinges on the outcome of ongoing tests, the certification process, and NASA's ability to slot it into an already packed launch schedule. For now, the focus remains on learning from past mistakes, refining the spacecraft's systems, and ensuring that when the Starliner does fly again, crewed or uncrewed, it does so with the safety and precision demanded of a vehicle entrusted with human lives. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.